information. Let me see. Eight by eight is our canvas size. All right. So here's what we're going to do. Something kind of fun and different. So we're going to be doing, um, oh, for lives like this one, you have to be a member to get the tutorials and the supply list. We reserve the tracers and the um, supply list for people who are members of Art Shatter or the Shattered Circle. That is a bonus inside our membership, okay? Does that make sense? Is that what you were asking? Okay, so we're gonna be doing this sweet pumpkin. He's a little cut off, I got him shifted because uh, once he's painted, we're gonna add a broom. Now, I don't know how we're gonna, where we're gonna add our broom. We may put it this way, we may put it this way, we may do it this way. We will decide that when it is time, but we're gonna do a black pumpkin. We're gonna be using some shades of gray. Uh, it, Bonnie, the membership will open again next Tuesday, so a week from yesterday. So we're gonna be using some grays and blacks. So I have a gray, this is gray storm and metallic white pearl. And we also have just black and metallic silver. All right, we're gonna be using grays and blacks. We're gonna do our background first, then we're gonna trace on our pumpkin, and then we're going to do uh, add our broom and some glass, some glass beads, see how, we'll, we'll figure that out as we go. But the first thing I wanna show you how to, what I did to create our little witch's broomstick, okay? Let's see. So first off, the stick. Use any stick, hey Pammy. You can use any stick out in your yard, okay? You don't have to go and buy this. But I got these at the Hobbly Lobbly. I believe I got these last year, but I know they still have them because I've seen them. Uh, Christmas crafts, and they're just little sticks, okay? Just little cute little sticks. So I used one of these, and I used raffia. And last but not least, where's my string? Jute. So you need a string or jute, raffia, and a little stick from outside. All right. So the first thing I did, because I, I knew I didn't need a ton of um, raffia, because it's, it's just a little broom. So the first thing I did was just cut off a blob. All right. Let me see. Let me try. This stuff can be so messy, can't it? So let me try, I'm gonna get away from my table so I don't have all that stuff in my resin later. Hang on, I'm just trying to straighten it out a little bit. All right, so I just pull your raffia out. You can make a great big broom too if you wanted to. And where it's bent, I'm just gonna cut it with my scissors in the bend because I don't want the bend in my broom, right? So I'm just gonna cut it. Let's grab a hold and cut. So now I have, see how messy? Messy, messy, messy. All right, I'm gonna move my canvas because I'm making a hot mess. All right, so now I have an end. That can be the end of my broom. So I need a top too. All right, so, and I don't want the bend in the top either, you can see. All right, so I'm just gonna cut off that other excess. And then we have a nice straight band of raffia. I gotta get this off my desk. We'll throw that on the uh, little display for Halloween or for uh, fall. So now I have just a little, and this is about a six inch, actually it's probably about a seven inch length of the raffia. Now all I'm gonna do is take my jute, and you could use a piece of raffia too if you wanted to, but I have some jute, so I'm just gonna take my jute and I am going to wrap it about two inches down, maybe a little further down. 
I'm just going to tie a knot. Let me see if I can tie a knot with one hand. <laughs> Grab it. Boom. All right, so we're going to tie a knot. We'll squeeze it tight. Mm. And I'm going to make a little knot out of it. Well, I'm, 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 I'm not fighting that fight. I'm going to trim it down a little bit. And then I'm going to add a little bit of glue. And I'm going to use the Aileen's clear glue. That's going to keep our knot from coming unraveled. So add a little glue. And then I'm going to just wrap it a couple, three or four times. And then I'm going to take the end and I'm gonna, that last loop, I'm gonna tuck it under, pull it. Where that glue side is, and I'm gonna add a little more glue right where I pulled it. And then I actually, I did my, my little broom earlier, so I just let it dry, okay? So I'm gonna cut off the end. So that is our first little band. Ooh, gosh. Mm -hmm. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna trim that down a little bit because it is uh, bendy there and I don't want bendy. Now I'm going to tuck my stick in. Ooh, that glue's wet still. That's why you wanna let that dry. It don't take very long at all. So now I'm gonna take my little stick and I'm gonna tuck it down in the raffia. And then we're gonna just do the same thing again with our jute. We're gonna tie a little knot. I feel like I got all thumbs today. Tie a little knot. Cut off the short excess, add a little glue so it doesn't come unraveled, and there's no discount on kits at all. Sorry. We don't have enough profit in kits to do a discount. All right, I cut my, my jute too short, but you would do the same thing. You're going to wrap it around two or three times, then you're going to tuck it and tie it off. I'm gonna have to just tuck mine. All right, and then you have a broom, okay? And you can trim this off however much you need to fit your canvas or for your desired look. So super cute little broom. I made this one earlier today and uh, we will actually gift this one. I'll get it uh, fixed and we'll gift this one to someone for doing what? <laughs> I will gift someone this broom and maybe a few extra little goodies for sprinkling the love. So go sprinkle, let your friends know we're here, come back and tell me that you sprinkled and we'll draw a name and gift somebody a broom and some bits and treasures, okay? So, now that we have our broom ready, we're gonna set that aside. We're going to paint our background for our pumpkin, okay? So I'm gonna use similar colors for the background that I'm gonna use for my pumpkin, just more muted and kind of spread out. Y'all know how I love to do that light center and a darker outside. That's kind of what we're gonna do. Except we're gonna, like, let's just see what we're gonna do. I don't know yet. <laughs> thank you for the sprinkles. Thank you, thank you. Let me have a sip, my mouth's so dry. Ah, all right. Let's get a little bit of this pearl. This is pearl. I'm actually gonna use white. I'm gonna save the pearl for my pumpkin. I'm gonna add just a little bit of white. 
And this is Gray Storm. And, oh, we're gonna add some gray. And I feel like I need another color. Let me grab something else. Something fall-esque, maybe camel. Yeah, let's do, let's do a little camel. Hopefully that won't turn into a mud pot. Little camel, which is kind of a warm yellow. And let's get a larger size brush. And let's do our background. All right, so we do, we're gonna paint our pumpkin black and silver and gray. So we wanna make sure that stands out. And our pumpkin is kinda living over on this side. So we're gonna do our lighter bit here and then we're gonna blend out a little darker around the edges. We're gonna make this super simple. We're not gonna go crazy and do any exotic background. I'm just gonna start first with my white right in this general area where, look, where our pumpkin's gonna go. We will blend in a little bit of color as well, but I wanna make sure that that area is lighter for my pumpkin. All right, so now that I have that white there, I'm gonna go out just a little bit further. And with the same brush, unwashed, I'm gonna go into that camo color. And we're gonna just blend that in. And add a little bit more white if you need to. I'm gonna wipe off some excess, just clean it off on your napkin. And then I'm just gonna kind of bring it down just a little until it kind of fades into nothing down at my lighter area. All right, I'm gonna wipe that off. Now I'm gonna go into the gray and let's hope that we're not gonna be making a horrible mess. All right, so grab a little white. I know, you're, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, oh my God, what is she doing? That is terrible. And it might be, but give me a minute first. <laughs> all right, I got all that gray there. I'm gonna wipe off the excess. Just clean your brush a little, don't rinse it. I'm gonna grab some of that white on my brush. And now I'm just going to blend, all right? We're gonna blend all those colors down into each other. Kind of pull them in. Oh, I'm kind of digging that. Kind of digging it. All right, I actually like this just the way it is. And we're gonna go with this. All right, so a little bit of white, a little bit of the yellowy color, and then the gray, All right? Probably should do my sides, but I'm not gonna do it right now. If I feel like I need to when it's done, I will come back and do that, all right? But do your sides if you want to. Um, that's a personal choice. When I'm live, I rarely do my sides because uh, I'm just too lazy. <laughs> Actually, I just don't want to take that extra time, but you do your sides, all right? So let's get this dry. We're gonna use our heat gun. and We're gonna get this dry. That's right, Rennie, you have to trust the process because oftentimes it looks ugly before it looks pretty. It's like, oh Lord, what have I done? And then it's like, oh, look what I did, right? So let's get her dry. Not red coffee today. I got too much to do. <laughs> I love me some red coffee though, y'all. Red coffee has been the, uh, th the one thing that keeps my 
back side the size it is. <laughs> if I stopped drinking red coffee, I would probably lose that, that last five pounds I've been trying to lose, but I don't care. It is what it is, right? Tis what it is. I'd rather be, I'd rather have those extra five pounds than not have my red coffee. White coffee is Wendy's favorite. I hear that. Okay, so we're all dry. I'm gonna just cool that off a little and I'm gonna grab my graphite paper and the stylus. We're gonna trace our pumpkin on to our canvas. So let's grab that. I'm gonna come down. Hmm, let's wait. Let's do something. I want to do, I want to put it on, I want to give it a um, place to sit before we start on that. All right, so you can see on my tracer, I added a little bit of like a table for it to sit on. So I'm just going to grab, I'm going to grab a little bit of white on my brush and I'm just going to come across with my white. And you see how I'm being skippy? I'm just kind of getting paint on the side of my brush. Hang on. One side, and I'm just going back and forth and just barely touching. I'm gonna wipe that off. I'm gonna grab a little gray. Can you see my plate? I'm gonna tap that in to the flat side, one side only. And I'm gonna come in, and I'm just gonna add a little bit of that gray the same way. And I'm gonna go back and forth with the white and the gray and give myself a little bit of a table. Let's get a little more white. A little more gray. Now we have a place for our pumpkin to sit so he's not just floating around on a canvas. Now let's get that dry. I almost forgot. Almost forgot. All right, let's try that. We'll take but a second. No, I didn't turn the stars off because I didn't. I was kind of running a few minutes late. So a lot of times I'll turn the stars off because y'all are so good to me anyway. Y'all come and y'all hang out and y'all support me. But I um, don't really want you to do that. Um, but I don't think I turned it off today, so I'm not sure why it's gone. All right, now we're going to do our tracer. All right, it's a little warm still. It does kind of, doesn't it? And there's like where the glow is coming from. All right, so let's put this here. And I'm going to use a little bit of tape. And I'm going to tape on this side. And I'm going to get another little piece of tape so it's kind of like a book so it doesn't wiggle too much. And we will slide, I love this pumpkin stem. <laughs> Gonna slide our graphite under. And don't press too hard with your hand on your graphite paper. You do, you do want to hold it in place, but you don't wanna press or slide your hand across because it will transfer that, that black onto your canvas, but you can alternatively just flip it over, take a little paper towel and rub against it, and that helps remove some of the excess that kind of gets on your canvas sometimes. But um, just don't press too hard, right? So I'm gonna come in and I'm going to just trace my little stem. And trace my stem. And, whoo, I wiggled. 
hopefully not too much. So we're gonna come in and do our little, four little pumpkin sections. And that one goes off the edge. All right, before you take this off, I want you to just open it up, take a peek, and make sure all your tracings are on the canvas and that you didn't miss, because I have missed so many times. So just take a peek before you remove your tracer. And voila. Okay. Put you there, you be good. Let's get started on our pumpkin. Okay, so I think I'm gonna start with my gray and then we'll use black and pearl and then a little bit of silver as we go. Who knows how this is gonna go? Have This is just out, out, out in, coming out of my brain as we work. So let's get some black, shake her up. Let's get some black. Oh, we're gonna start with gray. Let's get some gray. <laughs> Confusing my own self. Get that on our canvas. I mean, on our palette. Already had some, but that's okay. And I'm gonna get, let me see what size brush I want. I'm gonna use this brush, which is, I don't know, that's about a half an inch flat brush and I'm just gonna I'm gonna do it just like I always do one little section at a time all right so I'm gonna go into my gray and we're just gonna paint out that one section all right it's like you start with that one section and by the time you get to the third section you got it all figured out or the fourth, or the fifth, or the last, whatever. Then it's like, wow, look what I did, I dripped. I'm gonna try not to do that again. So get that gray on. All right, and while that's wet, I'm gonna offload which means I'm just gonna get all the excess off of my brush. And I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna grab my black. I should've put this on my plate already. And pearl. And silver. Ooh. All right, so I'm gonna grab, I'm gonna start with my black. Trying to decide. I may do my black and then come back after it's dry. So I'm gonna start with my black and I'm gonna hit like just this one side. Let some of the gray show through. Let some of it blend. Uh, mess that up. Offload a little. I'm gonna blend it out. All right, pretty happy with that. So we're gonna move to the next section and then after we do all of our sections, we're gonna come back with our other colors. All right, so let's wipe that off and let's go to our gray again. And let's do this little piece. My, my uh, canvas is rattling, which means it's not level. It means it's not square. Real shocker, huh? Oh, I gotta fix that. So let's paint. We're gonna get that gray on. So again, I'm, while I'm painting, I'm gonna remind you if you're if you just got here and you have not joined our Christmas tree challenge yet, we would love for you to take the time to comment the word trees, T-R-E-E-S, trees, not one tree, but two, three, multiple trees, 
comment the word trees and we'll send you a link with all the information about our Christmas tree challenge so that you can join us before it's too late because we only have five days left. All right, so I'm gonna just swirl that in. All right, I'm gonna add a little black on that side. We'll wipe that off. We're gonna do this one. Make sure your tracer lines are covered. All right, all the gray, and straighten that line out. We'll remove the excess. Grab the black, and I'm just gonna hit the top. And then just come down that side just a wee. And just kind of blend it over. Wipe it off. Lord have mercy, y'all. I don't know if this country can take many more hurricanes. So we're gonna wrap it around, do this last piece, then we're gonna come back and add some more color. Wipe off the excess. You can see I got a whole gray paper towel now. Grab a little bit of that black, and I'm gonna come around. I really wanted metallic black, and I was shocked, shocked and dismayed to see that I had none. All right, so that is where we're gonna start. I don't want this to be full dry, but I don't want it to be soaking wet either. So I'm just going to hit this for five or six seconds. And I'm going to come back. And I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab up some of this pearl. I'm going to start with the pearl. I still have a dirty brush. I am going to just brush some of that off a little. Get any excess out that I don't want it to be sparkling clean. I'm gonna go in to that pearl. Let me show you what I'm doing. Ugh. Go into your pearl and just kind of blend it into your brush a little. And I'm gonna come over and I'm just gonna add a little bit of pearl. That's a lot. That first little section was excessive, but that's okay. I'm gonna show you how to adjust. It, when I mess up, it just helps you guys know how to fix a boo-boo. So blend that out a little. Okay, while I still have that on my brush, I'm gonna get into that gray again. And we're gonna blend that out just a wee. Oh, it's not exactly what I wanted. I'm gonna go wipe it off, go into my black. We're just gonna we're just gonna go back and forth until I like it. And we're gonna come back over here. Add a little more black. Let me look at it. I don't hate that. Don't hate it. I'm gonna get a little bit of that pearl and I'm gonna flatten my brush. Just get the pearl on your brush and then just kind of pat it out so it's just flat on that one side. And I'm gonna come in my dark part and I'm just gonna follow the edge of the pumpkin and lay in some of that. 
kind of messy. You don't want it. I'm not trying to. Why is my eye watering so bad? I feel like something flew in my eye or something. All right, let's rinse. Literally, suddenly, my eye is like completely watering. Like I'm crying. All right. Let me rinse that off. We're going to try a little silver. Oh. We're going to give it a little bit of pizzazz. I'm going to do it on one side of my brush again. So I'm just going to dip in and just kind of load one side of my brush. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to come over and hit... Oh, that's lovely. Hit that edge. Oh my gosh. Hit that edge with that silver. This is really going to make this pop. Oh my Lord, hang on. I gotta find the Kleenex. I wish I could see, it's just my left eye suddenly. Oh. Good thing I don't wear makeup. It'd be run all over my face. Oh, okay, so I'm digging this. I think it looks good, but I think it needs a little bit. I don't know what it needs. I'm gonna dry it. The silver and the pearl are metallic. The black and the gray are not. Look at it. actually grab a brush that's dry. Like, um, let's get a smaller one. I'm gonna use this one. Dry, no water, okay, dry. I'm gonna grab some of this pearl. I'm gonna hit one side with it, and I'm gonna brush it through so it kind of minimizes how much paint I have on my brush. And I'm gonna use it flat side down, and I'm gonna hit and just make that little bit of white pearl pop up again. Hmm. All right, I'm gonna do it again on the other side. So this is the side that had my pearl. I'm gonna flip it, and I'm gonna add a little bit of black to this side. I don't have allergies at all, so, and it's just one eye suddenly running. I'm gonna get black, I'm gonna get a lot of that off. I'm just gonna pat it off. I'll use my paper towel. I want to get a lot of that off. I just want a smidgy. And I'm going to come to the opposite side and do the same thing. I got a little too much off. And I'm going to just run. And here's what this does. So we've applied several coats of different colors. We're going back and forth with color. And this helps with, or this creates a really dimensional effect. And when you look at it as um, a consumer, you're like, how did they do that? What color did they use first? Because it's just multi-layers, and I love tricking the eye that way. So it really makes people wonder, what color is that? And what color did she use first? So look, and it kind of flashes. Love this, love this, love this. I almost want to grab a palette knife. Let me see. I almost want to grab a palette knife and do a little splotch of white. Hang on, lost me again. I'm still here. I'm gonna grab, and if this is bad, I'll just wipe it off. A little bit of white on my palette knife. Neat, neat, neat. And I'm just going to, let me see, splotch. Oh, yes. Now we're talking. Let's get a little more, and I'm just packing it in on one side. Splotch, and just pat, pat, very lightly. Pat, pat, pat. Look at that. Look, 
that is so pretty. All right, let's paint our stem. I'm going to grab traditional burnt umber. I'm going to get a couple browns. Uh, hang on. Pretty. So traditional burnt umber. Let's see if we have any plate left to put that. All right, and I'm trying to make sure I keep all my colors together. And then I'm gonna use some of this dark chocolate too. Well, this is brand new, haven't even opened it. Hang on. Is this how you guys take the plastic off? Just twist it in the opposite direction so the plastic comes off? Tip of the day. Oh my goodness, a little bit of the chocolate. And let's get kind of a round brush. So I'm gonna use this, it's just a, oh, let's get a smaller one. Let's get a smaller one. All my brushes are dirty because I'm a terrible paintbrush mother. We'll use this one. Oops, where is it? There we go. This one. It is a number I don't know. <laughs> because like I said, I'm a terrible paintbrush mother and it's just all the stuff's off. All right. So I am going to go, I'm going to wet my brush. I'm going to start with the umber. That looks like, that don't look like umber to me. Oh, it's not. It's raw umber. I meant to get traditional burnt, but we're, we're going to go with this. So I'm going to roll and kind of make a point. So you're just going to saturate your bristles. All right. And then you're going to roll it to make sure it's at a point again. And I'm going to come out here. And we've talked about this um, for uh, every laugh for a couple weeks. You want, when it's a really skinny part, you're going to just barely touch the surface of your canvas so you're making a really nice, fine line, all right? And when it gets fatter, you can push down on your bristles to make it fill in, all right? So let's try to load that again. I don't like this color, but we're going to, it's there now, so we're going with it. I don't want to mess that up. So where it's really super skinny, you're just going to barely touch, barely touch. And as it starts to get fat, you're going to push down on your bristles, press your brush towards the canvas, press down, press more, press more, and we'll come back and start again. We'll load it. Roll to a point. We're going to come back and press down. And press down. All right, let's fill that in. I'm kind of, ooh, what was that? I'm trying to get into the pumpkin a little. There's a little booger or something. And let's just fill it in. It's just like coloring in a coloring book at this point. All right. So now that all that brown is on, hey Marla, Marla's back. I'm gonna wipe off my brush. I'm gonna go into that milk chocolate color we're just gonna do like a here and there application of that color, just to add another layer of color. So everything is not like the same color brown. Now I'm gonna grab up some white, which I don't have white. Yes, I do, that's white right there. I'm gonna grab up some of that white Roll it into my brush so it turns into a kind of a beigey color. And then I'm going to come down one side of 
my stem and I'm gonna add some of that white to that side of my stem. And this creates dimension. I'm gonna have to do that a second coat, but that creates dimension so it doesn't just look like a flat brown stick, right? Yeah. I don't like that brown. I don't like that brown. I'm gonna futz with it for just a sec. All right, pretty happy with that. I do kind of want to add a tiny bit of the white. So I'm going to get teeny, eeny, eeny, weeny, weeny, weeny bits uh, of the white on the tip of my brush. See, it's just an itsy bitsy bit. I'm going to bring that up into those little teeny bits of that stem as well. So there we go. So there's our stem. Super cute, love it. Let's get this dry and then we'll talk about decor, right? Hey, Gloria. Still got my little drops there. I, did, I didn't even care. I, I don't think I'm going to add vibes to this one because I think it's probably going to cover up. I don't know. We, we'll add some with our pen. You did. That's so cool. All right, let's put that cool a second. And I'm going to grab my pen, I think. All right, my illustration marker. We're gonna outline a few things and then maybe add some little vines or whatever. So I'm gonna just take my pen and I like short, quick strokes. And I've never tried to stay in the lines. I think it's more interesting if it's not. Short, quick strokes of one. Now it's gonna be really hard, hang on. I'm gonna use my Posca for the inside because it's gonna just show up better. That is not the Posca I want. So I'm gonna use the Posca for the pumpkin because it's black and it's just gonna show up better. So I'm gonna come around and just add that little quick line of black around my pumpkin sections. I'm even gonna give myself a little few lines here. I'm gonna come back up here and fix this a little. Maybe even do some little skippy lines here and there in the stem. All right, let's see. Now I think with trying to decide about swirlies, I almost don't even want to do it. I'm, I'm just like, I don't know, do I want to do it? I'm gonna make that a little longer. I think I'm actually gonna skip this viney stuff today. Add vines to yours if you want to, but I'm gonna skip it. Um, I am going, let me show you what I brought to the dance besides our witch's broom. And we're gonna need to decide once we get our glass and stuff on, and you can do this. I teach you how to paint just like your color in, in a coloring book. Believe in yourself, you can do it. You can do it. So we're gonna either put it like he, or we're gonna put it like he, or we're gonna put it 
Okay, so we're gonna have to make that decision, but I want to show you what I brought. I did bring a couple of different things. I do have black glass, all right? So we could add black, but my concern is it's gonna hide black. The black is kind of opaque, and it's gonna hide all our beautiful details in our pumpkin. That is my concern with the black. I also brought silver, and again, it is a little more translucent, so I'm kind of leaning towards the silver, but I really, my temptation is to use Starfire, but I think I'm gonna try the silver and see how I feel. I'm gonna try to keep my pieces small. I know I really wanna use my um, clear, my uh, Starfire. So I have the uh, silver, which I do love. I think I'm gonna go with the silver because I use clear so much or the Starfire so much. And I'm gonna just try to keep my glass on like one side of my pumpkin. And we'll come around just a wee. We'll add a few little nugs to the top of this side. Let me find another baby one, a little right there. And just a few. And I have some seed beads too. You guys know I got some seed beads, right? <laughs> you know I got me some seed beads. The only seed beads I had that were black were opaque and I didn't want to use them. So we're gonna use um, we're gonna use the clear crystal that we used last night. I'm just gonna add a few little pieces, maybe down here at the bottom. Let's see if I can get a few more. All right, I'm not terribly unhappy with that. Let me see. I'm at, I'm at that I can't stop portion of the life. I can't stop. Just gonna add a few. I'm gonna come all the way around. Not too much. Hopefully some of this will still show through. So we have to decide where we're putting this too because it's gonna interfere with the glass but I think we're gonna resin and then they'll lay this right on top. I may add some resin to one side and um, I am placing them on the darkest part of the glass, All right? So we're gonna resin, then we're gonna figure out, y'all can be talking amongst yourselves and we can decide where our broom is gonna go. I almost want to like fill in that space right there like that, kind of cool. And I think before we do anything else, I think I'm gonna take a brush and hang on. I'm gonna take a brush and I'm gonna add some of this gray to my stem and then a tiny bit of black. We'll let that dry. I think this will blend in. It'll look better. Yeah, it's not so perfectly fresh. All right. All right, I'm gonna mix up some resin and we are going to add some seed beads as well. Where'd I put them? We're gonna add these at the end. They're clear, but they're iridescent. So they will um, show, but they'll also reflect the black that is uh, in the um, pumpkin. So let's mix some resin. Let me put that one piece of glass in. And 
I'm gonna mix an ounce. I don't really think I'm gonna need an ounce, but we're gonna mix it anyway and see what happens. I don't really, I really don't think I need an ounce. <laughs> Second guessing myself. An ounce is a lot. All right, I'm gonna mix an ounce and I'll tell you at the end how much we used. Wish I could mix less and feel good about it. I hate when I don't make enough though. That is like my biggest pet peeve ever. Okay, so I marked my cup at the half ounce and the one ounce line. I'm gonna grab my gloves. And um, for some reason, that's not showing up very well. And I'm blind. So, let's see. Mm -mm -mm. Hard to get that left glove over that rock. Okay, so we're gonna mix up some resin. We're gonna do um, half an ounce of hardener. Ooh, I'm mixing too much, I know. And half an ounce of resin. This is art resin for those who are new here. And we're gonna stir. So for three minutes while I stir, because it's really hard for me to read your comments while I'm working. So while I'm stirring, feel free to ask me questions. You can ask me about this. You can ask me about the Christmas tree challenge. You can ask me about the shattered circle. You can ask me anything you want. And I will do my very best to answer your question. If I miss it somehow, I feel certain that Aunt, that um, Catherine will, and Becky, if she's here, I haven't seen her. She's in Florida, so she's probably hunkered down. Um, so, you mean like this? I don't know. I kind of like it at an angle. We'll see. We'll just see. So we're stirring for three minutes. Rachel, those bottles I bought on Amazon, they are, um, I, for, I always, somebody always asks and I always forget what they're called. They're actually two different kinds because I was testing to see which one I like best and I just love them both. But yeah, one is like a ketchup bottle and the other one, somebody's going to tell me what it's called because I can't remember. You squirt it out the top. So you can fill it. It has a, a, a top and a bottom you can open. Uh, Laurie, the annual fee is $4.20 for the year, so you get two months free if you pay for a year. Mary, that's but Me too, Mary. Me too. I'm always riding mine as well. FIFO. Thank you, Joyce Ann. They're that this one is called a FIFO, and I bought them both on Amazon. And I was trying to decide which one I liked better. Thank you, Lee. I was trying to decide which one I liked better, and I like them both. So I just left them separate. So I always know that my hardener is in the ketchup bottle and my Resin is in the FIFO. <laughs> oh, there's so much goodness in there, Lori. And honestly, I think the community of encouraging, loving, helpful, uh, amazing artists are, um, that are in the group are worth the price of admission. First in, first out bottles. That's right. We're stirring. Catherine's going to tell us when to stop. I don't really want to add green. I wish I had a black 
piece of vitrograph, I would totally add some black if I had it, but I do not have any black vitrograph. I need to talk to Miss Linda about that. Catherine says it's time, so I'm going to go around one more time and scrape the sides. I'm going to scrape across that bottom, make sure it's all. I'll show you what vitrograph looks like if I have a piece handy. Um, this is a piece of vitrograph. It is like, um, I'm going to lay it right there. It's like glass stringy stuff. Super, super cool. See, I don't really want green. If I had black, that would be spectacular, but I don't. I don't have black. I don't have it. All right, so let's go ahead and start with our glass. I want to add glass to, uh, or resin to the glass bits first because resin does self-level. So you want to add it to the uh, glass and then let it spread out after it's covered and then you're able to use what has leveled out onto your canvas to spread around to other parts of your artwork and that's what keeps our resin cost low because resin is not cheap and I, I am really good at you at using <laughs> the tiniest amount of resin possible and covering it perfectly. Oh, I'm sorry, Debbie. We advertise that all day, every day about that. Um, so if you decide you want to re-up, you can change that to the annual so that you get two months free. That silver turned out perfectly. I don't sell that, Elizabeth. That is something we buy on Etsy, and Catherine is going to uh, comment on your question and tell you who we buy it from. So we're covering the glass. We got way too much resin. We might need to put some on that. Um, broom too though so that witch don't fly away that is so pretty okay so i am going to take oh i hate that dot there that's where i dripped paints maybe our broom will cover it i'm going to take some of the uh, resin and i'm just going to drizzle it around my canvas and I'm going to save a little bit. That ounce, might, we might end up using most of that. So I'm now I'm going to take my gloved hand. Never use resin without gloves. Um, I'm not in any shape, form, or fashion allergic to any of the chemicals in most anything. I'm very resilient when it comes to things like that. I don't really have allergies. But you don't want this on your skin, if, especially if you're super sensitive. Now, the art resin that we use is a non-hazmat resin. It's made in the USA, and it's a no VOC, non-VOC, COV, uh, no BPAs in this resin. No hazardous fumes if mixed and used as directed. Huh? A lot of words, lot wasn't of it? It was a lot of letters and a lot of words. So, but you still want to take precautions. You always want to pay attention to the directions. You always want to read the precautions um, and make sure you're doing what is best for you. So if you're susceptible to smells, this doesn't really have a smell in my opinion, but if you're super smell sensitive, it might smell to you. But I'm always gonna encourage you to do what it is best for you to take care of yourself. All right, I'm gonna to try to spread that between. All the way around. Looks like it's nice and covered. So while it is, since it's covered, before we add 
Uh, before we add anything else, I'm gonna hit it with my heat gun and pop bubbles. to grab my seed beads. Where'd they go? Seed beads. You can't smell it either, Mary? Good for you. That makes me happy though. I mean, when I started using, I've been using art resin for um, 15 years, 14, 15 years, and I love it. I've never had an issue with it. Um, and I just love it. So, I'm going to use these seed beads. This is the Mayuki Crystal AB, and it's a size 8. And I'm going to sprinkle just right on top of my glass and really give that glass a little extra pump, punch, even though it's silver and really stands out nice. These iridescent beads are going to really do the trick. All right, so I'm going to sprinkle right on top. I didn't get enough. I need more. Let's get a little more. Sprinkle, sprinkle, beads, beads, beads. And, all right, now I'm trying to decide if I wanna just smatter some beads. Just kinda let them go where they may. Now, I don't wanna go too crazy. And I do have a couple that I wanna move, like this one. It's up in the sky. I'll put you back down here. And then this one. I'll put you back down here. Now let me wipe that off before it gets glued on there. All right, so I want to show you this close up look at how gorgeous. I cannot wait to see this dry. I think. This is going to really be spectacular when it's dry. Um, I see a few things I want to move. I got some beads over here, beads over here, and I thought I saw a Skippy. So let me take a peek, and make sure. There we go, looking good. All right, we have a little bit of resin left. So I'm going to use a tiny smidge to go over the top of my seed beads. Don't normally do that unless I have extra because they do stick to the wet resin that's already on there. So it's just uh, extra precaution. And now we need to decide uh, where this is going to go. Our little witch's broom. So cute. And I want to kind of see if I can get it to lie a little flatter than it might want to. All right, let me see. Let me move this up a little. See bead on the upper left? No, but there is something right there. I don't know what that is. It's just like a paint booger or something. No, we're all good. All right, that's, that's laying down pretty good right there. All right, so I'm thinking like this. What do you guys think? Like laying right across like it's leaning on the pumpkin? What do you think? Watch this. I'm going to actually take a little bit of my resin. And let me see. It's going to lay like that. I'm going to flip it over. I'm gonna add just a wee of resin, like right on my jute and up the stem a little and on my jute again, just to make sure it sticks. And I'm gonna go right next to the pumpkin. All right, I wanna make sure it's stuck down. I'm gonna pour a little bit of resin. I'm gonna actually hit the stick with the resin and let it cover 
the stem. I'm going to hold that so that it is secure. I don't want to get it on the jute, though, or the broom. All right. Let's see. Let's see how we like it. I think it is stinking adorable. That is so cute. I, I think we could have done without the broom, and maybe I'll do another one that is black and silver uh, without the broom, but I just thought it was so sweet and whimsical, but you could totally do without the broom. Let's scoot it over just a wee, and uh, just have that cute black and silver pumpkin. So stinking cute. Love it.